Good day, good day everyone and once again your favorite uncle is back and welcome to our channel and of course uh, you know uh, we are going to be continuing to give you good content when it comes to maths and science and this time I'm going to be talking about uh, solving quadratic equations uh, this is going to be probably a five-part series okay so uh, today I'm going to be looking at factorization okay so if you haven't subscribed please just make sure that you're part of the family and of course for those of you who needed to to get in touch with us now we've got a website um, lungisinkosi.co.za and of course on the socials uh, instagram it's at underscore lungisinkosi and uh, as well as facebook lungisinkosi za or in this case you can get us also on tiktok uh, that's at underscore lungisinkosi all right so let's get right into uh, our uh, grade 11 content. Now we're looking at factorization or we are looking at solving quadratic equations. Okay, so in this case, we'll be looking at factorization in particular. Right, now in this case, let's just uh, first of all, just clarify uh, where the concept comes from. Now, if you take two products or, or rather if you take a product meaning that when you multiply two things a multiplied by b right and you get an answer of zero right so if i multiply two things and get a zero as a product it either means that uh, a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero now i want you to note the same cannot be said if it is any other number so if you take let's say a multiplied by b equals to six you cannot necessarily say that a is equals to six or uh, b is equal to six right so please note that this only will work uh, when you've got zero as your product okay now in this case, just remember that when I put things in brackets, right, uh, it simply means that now it becomes one, uh, um, you know, one term. So, for instance, if I take something like x minus 2, let's say x plus 3, and I say to you it is equal to 0. Remember, this in brackets means it's one term. And this also is another term. So what does it mean? It means that if I'm taking these two terms multiplied by each other and I get a, an answer of zero, right? It means that x minus 2 can equal to zero or it means that x plus 3 is equal to zero. And of course, that is how we are now going to solve it and say, therefore, x. Now, remember, when we take it to the other side, it changes sign. Right. So it means that X will be equal to two or it means that X in this particular case will be equals to negative three. Right. So what I want us to do very quickly, we're going to just remind ourselves about multiplication. OK, and just see uh, how we're going to uh, do that. Now, um, um, for instance, if we've got uh, so let's take just one five uh, X plus seven okay giving us uh, 3x minus 2 which is equal to 0 um, this may seem mundane but remember I, I, I want you guys to get this uh, so that you are able to uh, you know um, uh, do well in this particular section okay right so what does it mean it means that 5x plus 7 is equal to 0 or in this case 3x minus 2 is equal to zero so now please i want you to be careful so we're going to say 5x now note in this case these are two different terms so in this case we can take this one to the other side it changes sign so it's going to be minus 7 or it's 3x which is equal to when we take this to the other side it changes sign we be it becomes 2 and now to solve this so we're going to divide because remember, this is a product, isn't it? So the inverse of uh, multiplication is division. The inverse of addition is subtraction, right? So anytime I want to uh, reverse addition, I subtract. If I want to uh, um, reverse subtraction, I add, right? But if I want to, um, you know, reverse division, 
I multiply and the other way also is true. Right now, so in this case, I need to divide both sides by five. Remember in mathematics, what I do on the left, I also do on the right. So I'm going to divide by three here and divide by three there. So this cancels that. So X will be equal to negative seven over five or in this case, right, that cancels with that. So X would be equal to two over three, right? All right, now let's talk about factorization this time around. So we're going to look at factors. Now, ladies and gents, the first thing that I want you to note, when we factorize, if the, okay, let me just take an example. Uh, so that's minus 12x uh, plus 35. So I want us to, to walk this through together, right? So a quadratic equation, right, will always be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, we'll come back to this example, right? So ax squared plus bx plus c, right? What we always need to make sure of is that we place the quadratic equation in its standard form. At the end of the day, I want to have a zero on the other side. Remember what I said earlier on, right? That uh, once I've got a zero, then I know that I can be able to, um, you know, uh, factorize in this case and solve for the particular factors, right? So in this case, if in case number one, so if the coefficient of our x squared term, meaning that the value of a is 1, okay? So all I'm going to do is focus on my c value. I'm going to show you what I mean by that just now, right? So if the coefficient of x squared is 1, so I'm going to focus only on my c value. So in this case, we've got x squared minus 12x plus 35. Now take a walk with me so that you can be able to understand what I mean by that, right? So now coefficient of x squared is a, a, a 1. So it means I can open up the two brackets, right? Now please listen carefully. So I am going to look for the factors of 35. Now note such that when I add them, they will give me the middle term, okay? So did you see how I did that? I'm looking for the factors of 35, right? Such that when I add them, they give me 12, okay? So first of all, let's start with this one. Of course, we know we're going to have x and x over here because we know those are the um, you know, uh, x multiplied by x in this case will give me x squared, right? Now, what are the factors of 35 in this case? So my thinking in this case, I can say, well, 7 multiplied by 5. Now, let's check. If I say 7 multiplied by 5, that definitely gives me 70, uh, I mean 35, right? But if I say 7 plus 5, right, such that when I add them, they will give me the middle term. So in this case, 7 plus 5 does definitely give me 12, right? So it means I can use 7 and 5 over there, right? Because uh, it does give me, uh, it does satisfy the conditions, right? Now, factors of 35 such that when I add them, I get 12. Now, if the answer or rather if the sign in front of my constant term is positive, then it tells me that in this case, the signs inside my bracket are the same. And where do I get the sign? I get it from the middle term, right? So if this is positive, okay, so it tells me that my sign is, uh, signs are the same. So where do I get the sign? I get it from the middle term, right? So in this case, what I'm simply going to say is that, okay, so it means that uh, the signs are the same inside the bracket. So therefore, it's going to be negative and negative. So now, can you see we've got that condition of ours? So x minus 5, uh, I mean x minus 7, x minus 5. So then we can say, well, it means that x minus 7 is equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0, right? So therefore, we know that x is equal to 7 or 
x is equal to 5. Now, please, I want to, in the future when we do this, you must be able to just move from this step right up until this one. Of course, if you're going to be good at mathematics, you have to develop, you know, some really efficient methods uh, of knowing how to solve uh, for, for stuff. Okay, right. Now, let's take another example, right? And I want us to uh, have a look at a different one. So x squared minus 3x minus 18, and this is equal to 0, okay? Now, have a look at it, right? So again, coefficient of x squared, right, is 1. So in this case, I don't need to worry myself much, right? Uh, because I know it's just simply going to be x and x. So now this will be x here, x there, right? Now I'm looking for the factors of 18 such that when I subtract them, look at this, right? The sign there is subtraction, such that when I subtract them, I will get 3, right? The middle term, right? Factors of 18, that's such that when I subtract them, I will get 3. Um, I'm sure you are thinking now, right? So that's going to be 6 and 3. 6 times 3 gives me 18, right? And 6 minus 3 does give me 3, isn't it? Okay, so I know my factors are going to be 3 and 6. Now, I want you to please listen carefully, ladies and gents, right? So what it means now, if the sign for my constant term is negative, it means that the sign in my brackets is not the same, right? So I've got two different signs inside my bracket, right? So now I want you to please note carefully what I'm going to say, right? So it is the sign of the uh, bigger product that will give me the sign of the middle term. So in this case, I've got 3x over here, right? So if I consider multiplying these two, they'll give me 3x. And in this case, if I multiply those two, they give me 6x. Which one is the bigger product? Definitely it's going to be 6x, right? So now it means the bigger product must give must take the sign of the middle term. So in this case, it means that I must have a negative 6x. And how can I do that? It means that 6 must be negative, right? But we know that the signs in the bracket should be different. So in this case, this has to be positive. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. So now I know I've got x plus 3 uh, and x minus 6 giving me 0. So it means that x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 6. I hope that makes sense. And by the way, uh, if you want to, you can multiply these again and just check if you do find, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the same uh, quadratic equation again, right? I just want to quickly move on to the next one. So this was our second one, right? So let's go on to the third one. Uh, now, what I just want you to do, um, just a quick practice, right? Um, in this case, uh, yeah, you can try and solve. In fact, let me give you another one, uh, you know, for you to solve a little bit later. Now, what happens when the sign or rather when the coefficient is no longer 1? So 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Okay, right. Now, when the coefficient is no longer 1, can you see that my coefficient is greater than 2 this time? Right. So what are we going to do? I am going to look for factors of 2 and the factors of 3, right? And again, such that when I add them, all right, when I take the product and add them, I, I am going to actually get 7. So in this case, what are those factors? So it has to, you have to be careful how you place them. So factors of 2, that's 2 and 1. So 2 times 1 gives me 2, right? And factors of 3, that's 3 and 1. There are no other factors, right? But now let's check, right? So what you do to check your brackets, what you'll do is you cross multiply. And this takes a little bit of uh, trial and error. Uh, you might get it right the first time, but you might not as well, right? Uh, but it, do it doesn't matter. Once you get into the rhythm of it, you really get, uh, you know, uh, to perfect this, okay? So what you do, I'm going to cross multiply, 
right, and say 2 multiplied by 1, that gives me 2. And in this case, 3 multiplied by 1, that will give me 3. And remember, when I take those uh, products and add them, this says I add them, I must get 7. Does 3 plus 2 give me 7? Absolutely not. Now, what you now need to do, if you don't get the product that you want, so what you do, uh, because there are no other factors of 3, so I'm going to now just change those factors around, okay? So I'm going to have 1 and 3 over there, right? So in this case, factors of 2, it's 2 and 1. Factors of 3, it's 1 and 3. So let's cross multiply. So in this case, again, so I'm going to say, right, I just want to change color. So I'm going to say 2 multiplied by 3, that will give me 6. And I will say 1 multiplied by 1, that will give me 1. So when I add those products, in this case, does that give me 7? Absolutely, it does, right? So now I want you to please listen carefully. What it simply means is that that's going to be my first bracket and that's going to be my second bracket. You'll see what I mean in just a, a moment, right? So now it means my first bracket will be will compose of 2 and 1. But remember, we've got an x there. So that will be 2x and 1. And the other bracket, so that's 1x, so that's x and 3, right? And we know this is equal to 0. Now, please remember, I said that uh, those products, such that when we add them, they give us 7. So it does give us 7. In this case, now, what does it mean? The sign in front of our constant term is positive. What does it say? It says that the sign inside our brackets are the same, right? And what is going to be that sign? It will be the sign of the middle term. So in this case, it means our sign is going to be negative on both brackets. So we've got minus and minus. So therefore, we'll have 2x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 3. All right. And so in this case, of course, we're going to divide by 2 on both sides. So x is equal to 1 over 2 or in this case, x is equal to 3. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents as we're going to move on to another one. All right, so let's take uh, the next one. So sometimes we can get equations. Let, uh, let me just write it down first. So if we get something like uh, 3x squared minus 12x minus 15 is equal to 0. Now, before you can go on and just factorize, right, just check if there is no common factor uh, between uh, all your terms. Now, when you look at this, uh, 3x squared, 12x, 15, all of those are divisible by 3, isn't it? So what you do first is that you try to see if you will not get a fraction. You can divide by the coefficient of x squared because, of course, it's easier to always deal with, uh, you know, when the coefficient of x squared is 1, right? So in this case, I'm going to divide everything by 3, right? So uh, divide uh, 3 by 3, that will give me 1, so that will be x squared. Divide 12 by 3, in this case you get uh, 4x, and in this case divide uh, 15 by 3, you get 5, and of course 0 divided by 3 will give you 0 still, right? So in this case that gives me x squared minus 4x minus 5 is uh, equal to 0, and now, look, look um, in this case, I can just focus what are the factors of 5 su such that when I subtract them, I get 4. So in this case, of course, that's going to be 5 and 1, isn't it? So that's x and x, that's 5 and 1. And I know that my signs are different in this case. So in this case, it simply means that I am the bigger product will take the sign of the middle term. So the bigger product is uh, should be negative. So 5x is your bigger product, uh, bigger product rather, that is. So it's going to be negative. So that's going to be negative and that positive. So x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so that's what happens when your sign uh, or rather the sign of your coefficient in this case, the coefficient rather of x squared is greater 
uh, than one, but it is actually a multiple of uh, the others. Okay, right. So uh, I want us to quickly take uh, on another one, right? So uh, I, I want you to now start practicing this on your own, right? So if we took 4x squared, okay, so we're taking 4x squared plus 11x plus 6 is equal to 0, all right? If you can, pause the video and see if you're going to uh, find it, you know, find the answer. And then you can continue, right? Okay, so if you had paused, in this case, this is what it will look like. So I'm looking for factors. So I can't divide by 4 in this case because, well, if I divide uh, 11 by 4 in this case, remember, uh, it is not a factor, right? So um, what I need to do, right, let's check. Is it possible for me to have 4 and 1? Remember, we said it's trial and error, isn't it? And then I'll have uh, 6 and 1. Let's cross multiply. Right. If I say four times one, that gives me four. If I say six times one, that gives me six. When I add those two, it doesn't give me 11. Right. So even if I swap them around, you know, so when you are used to this, uh, you can do it quite quickly. Um, so if I swap them around, uh, sorry, that's supposed to be six. So if I swap them around, of course, uh, six times four will give me 24. And that will give me 1. So in this case, definitely doesn't give me 11, right? So what I can do uh, in that case, so I'm trying to show you what you will do uh, to try and get yourself. So if I say factors of 4, it's 2 and 2, right? So let's check. So if I say 2 times, uh, 6 times 2, okay? So that will give me um, 12, and 2 times 1, so that's 12 and 2, so definitely that doesn't work, right? So uh, what you simply do is you just continue to uh, try, and you know, you just keep trying different permutations. Now, uh, I heard some people say, well, but this is tedious, uh, you know. Look, every time you look for something that actually works for you, right? So let's look at this. If I say 6 times 2, that will give me, uh, you know, um, uh, 6 times 2, that will give me, I mean, uh, 2 times 3, that rather 6, and then 2 times 2, that will give me 4, and definitely that doesn't give me 11. But now let's try something else, okay? So what if I said 4 and 1, okay? And I say 4 times 2, that will give me 8, and I say 3 times 1, that will give me 3, and definitely 8 plus 3 gives me 11 so it means that that's my first bracket that's my second bracket okay so it means now i can find by the way you become quicker at this the more you keep trying okay so i am going to simply say okay so that's 4x sorry uh, so my bracket that's going to be 4x and 3 and my other bracket will be x and 2 okay so again the sign of my constant term in this case is plus. So it means that the signs inside the bracket are the same. So uh, what would be the sign? It would be the sign of the bigger of the middle term. So that means that's going to be plus and plus. That would give me zero. And so I know that 4x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to negative 2. So in this case, I've got x is equals to negative 3 over 4. So remember, I'm dividing by 4 on both sides. And of course, uh, x is equal to negative 2 on the other side. So please remember, ladies and gents, um, so here's what I want to do. I want you, uh, you know, to take this exercise, right? As I conclude, of course, what we're going to do next, okay, we are going to solve for x now using the quadratic formula that will be in our next section, right? Uh, I want you to take uh, uh, this one. Okay, um, x squared plus 6, okay, plus 11x, okay, equal to 0. Of course, what you're going to do in this case, you're going to multiply into the bracket, right? 2 times x squared 
that will give me 2x squared uh, 2 times 6 in this case that's going to be 12 uh, plus 11x is equal to 0. So what you need to do put it in standard form first so that's 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 okay I want you to please go on ahead and get me the factors here and find me the right solution please uh, comment um, and tell me what answer you get all right ladies and gents as i said on the next section what i'm going to be doing um, instead of doing factorization this time we'll be looking at solving for x using the quadratic formula otherwise from me your favorite uncle i'll see you guys again next time and please be sure to subscribe and tell as many people as possible about this channel where you'll get your plug when it comes to maths and science content. Otherwise, from me for now, see you guys next time. Shop, shop.